What is going on Bolt Nation? This is Laserbolt coming at you with another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Call of Duty Blackout and how to manage a proper inventory. Now, for those of you who are new to Call of Duty or for those of you who have been playing Call of Duty, you guys know that this is by far one of the hardest issues to deal with because you're trying to figure out what is the best way or what is the best set of perks what is the best set of equipment what is the best set of healables to have in your inventory when you get to the later stages of the game having a proper inventory set up is going to allow you to win more games and it's just going to allow you to become a more effective player when you're playing call of duty blackout so if this is something you guys do find interesting do me a huge favor guys subscribe to the channel make sure you turn on those notifications and drop a like and without further ado guys let's jump right into inventory management in call of duty blackout in call of duty guys there's going to be multiple of stuff that you could pick up and knowing what to pick up and what to discard and what to get rid of is going to be very essential to you winning more games we're going to be talking about the 10 slots that you have available in, in your inventory. The reason why I decided to do 10 and not 5 is because I'm pretty sure as you progress through the game, you already know that once you pick up a backpack, that's going to give you access to 5 more additional inventories. There are multiple things you could carry within the inventory system. You could carry weapon attachments. You could carry a sensor dart. You could carry different sets of grenades, explosive grenades, uh, you know, concussion grenades. You could carry a trophy system. You could carry a barricade. You could carry sets of perks. You could even carry a recon car and all sorts of different stuff. Now, there are 10 slots, and I've seen people play. And when I've seen people play, the majority of their slot looks really sloppy. Or there are people who just don't know how to organize or don't know, should I carry more bandages? Should I carry more health packs? Should I carry a trauma kits? What exactly should I carry? And how should I manage my inventory? And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to get started with the health items. There are three different sets of health items. You have bandages, you have med kits, and you have trauma kits. Now bandages only give you 25 health that will only fill one little bar of your, uh, you know, of your health. We have the med kits would feel which fill a total of 50% or two little bars of your health. And we have the trauma kits, which fill a total of 150 of your health. So it gives you the whole health back, plus it gives you an additional 50 on top of that to give you more health. So let's talk about what you should actually pick. Should you pick bandages? Should you pick med kits? Or should you pick trauma kits? Of course, all of you guys know that trauma kits would be the most ideal option right here, right? Of course, it gives you more health. But the only problem is that when you're in engagement, the amount of time it takes for you to actually pop a trauma kit will be detrimental in you actually winning the fight or being able to re-enter the fight. So which one is best out of all of these to actually give you the advantage of when you get shot to be able to re-engage that fight? Or maybe you kill two people and you got, a, you got a little bit hit, you know, you need to recover some health. Which one would give you the more benefit of you actually coming on top than you coming on the bottom? Of course, the fastest ones you could possibly use are bandages. You have the ones uh, that the med kits take a little bit longer and trauma kits take more longer than med kits. Now, here is what I would suggest. If you guys are towards the later stages of the round and you have a choice to pick between what should go in your inventory and what shouldn't go in your inventory, I would definitely go with medkits over anything. I would definitely go with medkits. You're able to stack up a total of five medkits that gives you at least 250 health that you could recover per slot. So you'll be able to have one medkit slot with five and then I would have an additional medkit slot with another set of five giving me a total of 10 medkits. The reason why I would avoid the bandages is because the bandages take almost about the same amount of time for me to pop a med kit. The med kit takes a little bit longer, but it's still a more effective because it will give me 50% health back. This will allow me not only to come back in the fight and re-engage in the fight, as opposed to me having to pop one bandage and another bandage to get that 50 health back. And it just makes it more easier for me to re-engage that fight and take control. So if I had to pick how many slots of medkits I would put in my inventory, I would definitely put two medkit slots in my inventory, leaving me with a total of eight more slots that I could definitely have something to use or something to put in there. On top of the two medkit slots that I have filled, I am definitely going to use an additional slot for a trauma kit. The reason why I want to go ahead and use an additional slot for a trauma kit is just for the simple fact that there could be a possibility sometime I 
I may get caught in the storm and the trauma kit will allow me to actually exit the storm without having to heal myself as I move along. Not only that, but if I end up a fight where there, I took a lot of damage, this is going to give me a faster way to be able to heal myself and re-engage the engagement and, uh, you know, kind of get to a safe place and then pop that trauma kit. So I would definitely put a slot for a trauma kit and that will leave me with a total of seven more slots points that we're going to be talking about of what we're going to be including in here. All right, so now on to the grenades. Now, the grenades are kind of interesting because based on the game mode that you're playing is going to determine which grenades I recommend. If you do a lot of solos or if you do a lot of squats or duels, some grenades are a little bit more effective for a certain category of uh, you know engagements that you have. So we have a couple grenades. Uh, I'm going to only mention the ones I consider should be the top tier grenades and the ones we should really definitely be talking about. And that's going to be a cluster grenade and that is going to be a concussion grenade. Those to me are by far the best grenades in the game. Uh, you have incendiary grenades, of course, and then, you know, you have the other throat frag grenades. But th those, I mean, to me, those are kind of obsolete. I would definitely do clusters or a concussion grenade. So how would I actually set this up? So what I would do is I would definitely add a cluster grenade into my inventory. That's going to leave me with a rough amount of um, a total of six more slots that I could definitely fill here. And I am also going to throw in another cluster grenade. So I'm going to have two cluster grenades as part of my as part of my inventory. I already filled the full the full top with five slots gives me an additional five more slots to fill this up. So I got two cluster grenades. I have my meds ready to go and I'm going to include another grenade which is a concussion grenade. The concussion grenade is going to be very effective. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm kind of a little bit hesitant to include this one is because this grenade in particular is really effective when you're playing duels or when you're playing squats. The reason why is because with this grenade, you could dis disorient a larger amount of people, making the grenade a little bit more effective than it would just to disorient one person because if you throw this in a group of four everybody's going to get stunned if you throw this in a group of two everybody's going to be stunned it's probably going to allow you to actually kill the four-man team before they even get down of their stun phase or at least kill two people before they get unstunned so definitely i would really recommend concussion grenade and two cluster grenades cluster grenades are very helpful for engagements on 1v1s and also engagement engagements on a 2v1 3v1 or 4v1 uh, definitely a really good grenade to hold off the perimeter so now we are left guys with a total of four slots to fill up and there are a couple things we could definitely use in this slot i am going to include something that i think is by far one of the most underrated and i see less used items in the game and that is a trophy system you guys have no idea how effective a trophy system is during the late stages of the round and how effective it is early stages just an overall really good system to carry the reason why this system is so effective is because when the circle gets closer and when you're getting closer to the later rounds a lot of people tend to spam grenades to either push you out of a building to put you out like to push you out of a zone and the trophy system will be a lifesaver and i highly recommend if you guys are not using a trophy system or you guys find it that it's not worth you carrying in your inventory to start considering carrying it in your inventory because it's going to be a lifesaver for you and also for your team if you're playing squats or duels. What makes the trophy system even better than just having it laying around is that you're able to carry this with you as you progress throughout the game. You're definitely able to put the trophy system and if you need to move precision or you need to move to another area, you can just pick it up, take it with you and then use the trophy system once again. It's a very usable uh, item that you can have in your inventory and it is going to be a lifesaver for you guys. Trust me on this one. If you guys don't use the trophy system, please guys start using it and you guys will be able to thank me later. So now we are left with a total of three more slots and these three more slots, I'm actually going to be using these for perks and perks are primarily really, really important in this game. If you're not using perks, I highly recommend you watch my perk guide video where I break down each individual perk, why the perk is effective, why the perk is not effective and which perks are the best in the game. I will leave a link to that description in the description. I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below. So definitely do ahead and click that, you know, link. 
so you guys can know exactly what is going on. So the first perk and the number one priority perk that I'm definitely going to be including here is Dead Silence. Now, Dead Silence is going to be a perk that if you're not using it, I don't know what's wrong with you because you should definitely start using it as of right now. Like if you're playing a game, turn off the game or restart the game and make sure you get a Dead Silence perk. But what I'm saying is this perk is going to give you a big big advantage over your enemy not only is it going to give you an advantage but it's going to allow you to do a lot of things that you probably wouldn't be able to do if you're not using this perk it's going to let you flank it's going to let you approach different areas without being detected so definitely dead silence is a perk i highly recommend and i put this in my number one priority of any other perk currently in the game the number two perk i'm going to be adding in my inventory is awareness now awareness is a very very good perk a lot of people tend not to use it because either they don't dispose of really good headsets or, you know, something something's wrong with their audio. But even if you have bad headsets, awareness is actually going to even make that even better because you'll be able to hear people if you're probably not hearing them with your bad headsets. But if you have a really good pair of headsets and talking about headsets, guys, highly recommend you guys check out my review on the Turtle Beach headsets, which are by far one of the best headsets, especially for playing Call of Duty Blackout due to the superhuman hearing that they have. So I definitely recommend you guys check out that review. I'll leave a link in the description as well. But apart from that, guys, awareness is going to give you the ability of being able to hear people before they even show up to the party. You'll be able to spot an enemy before they even make it across the hill, before they even make it into your building. And that's going to let you be ready for when that person comes. If you pair awareness with, with uh, Dead Silence, this is a killer combo and something that you guys should definitely go ahead and consider. The last perk I'm going to be adding in here is called Reinforced. Now, Reinforced is a really good perk. The reason why Reinforced is a really good perk is because Reinforced gives you the ability to kind of be like more tanky than you already are. It's just going to provide you that extra reinforcement and make you a elite titan as you go and engage the battle. So once again, guys, this is my current inventory. You're going to have uh, the first, you're going to have two sets of med kits. You're going to have one trauma kit. You're going to have two cluster grenades. You're going to have one concussion grenade. You're going to have a, a dead silence. You're going to have awareness and reinforcement. And that will pretty much condense the best inventory loadout that you could possibly have in the game. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of my inventory suggestions? If you guys agree or disagree, if you were to change it up, what would be your number one inventory loadout that you think is the best one out of all of them? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget, guys, if you want to stay up to date to all things Call of Duty Blackout, make sure you guys keep it locked on this channel, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Yo, there's definitely people in the house, bro. Anybody have a sensor dart? No. Anybody got like... Wait, where's the barricade? Oh, yep. He's the only time to throw a nade up there. He's the only throw a nade. Look out, look out. So I can get Dude, up top. Down them. Get off my boy. Supply drop inbound. From where? Expected. Travel to indicated safe zone. This guy's still alive. 
Got him. Sit rep. Circle collapse imminent. Get to safety. This guy two sets it up on him. Well, that sensor dot's gonna be helpful, bro. Yeah. And two traumas. Net call. Supply drop incoming. Man, hit him. I got a pally, boys. Oof. I want it. No, I'm not gonna get it. Dean, don't, don't do it. it. No. I'm going, boys. It's so dangerous. Alright, Dean. We'll leave you. You're on your own. We'll just, just wish me luck. Okay? Just wish me luck and I'm. You have my, you have my luck. Alright, I'm gonna put a barricade on the stairs here. I made it. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> he said I made it. I'm alive. Hey, do we have a trophy system or not? Hey, is this your mesh? Your mesh mine? Is this your bar wire? Whose bar wire is that? Further collapse expected. Relocate to safe zone. He's pushing me. He's pushing. Oh, he's Is anyone able to get the res? Yeah, yeah. res? I got you. I'm here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Circle collapse imminent. Get to safety. Was he the only one? He had to be. He jumped right up my bed. <laughs> I got him. Ooh. I'm pushing. Uh. Alright, for sure. Good job, Dean. Good job. Be advised. Further oh, collapse so expected. Too. Actually, Relocate to safe zone. Wait, let me put a sensor dot on that. Let me put a sensor on that. Where is it? There you go. Alright, Dane, he's gonna be your UAV. Be careful out there. Wait, it's just one guy. I just realized it's just one guy. Let's get it. That's how we do it, boys. Missionary is secure. Oh, 